title page, and if you'll see the link, uh, goillinois.edu forward slash NADP training, uh, you can click on that and download all the information for today's NOAA 4 troubleshooting webinar or one of our past webinars that we had last year. Uh, on schedule are five webinars, and uh, they will come out in monthly mailings and announcements throughout the year covering different aspects of NADP protocol. Uh, so set your sights on joining us about every couple months for a webinar. Uh, if we decide to do more frequently, uh, we will, uh, like I said, send the announcements in the monthly mailing as well as emails. Uh, one of the things is we had an awful winter, and I, I don't know anybody in the 50 states, uh, maybe Hawaii and Virgin Islands, that didn't have trouble with the uh, what they call polar vortex uh, and the tumultuous snows and horrible winter conditions. But one of the biggest problems we saw this year was operators, not only with their collectors having problems, with their ability to connect to their NOAA 4 rain gauge. And we wanted to have a little uh, webinar where it would be an opportunity for us to just go through a basic uh, working of the PDA itself, familiarize yourself with the different parts of the PDA. Uh, a lot of times if you get to a certain point on your PDA when you're trying to download your data, people kind of freeze, myself included, it has happened to me, and you don't know how to reverse back. So we want to try to cover that today as we progress. First slide will have the PDA. I thought that was kind of a neat little, I uh, wanted to kind of do a cartoon feature. Why won't you talk to me? Uh, there's many reasons as we show both the PDA and the rain gauge itself. The first one, familiarize yourself with the PDA. And as we do this, Chris Lehman, uh, the CAL director is going to have the camera on my actual PDA and we will show you the process of how it goes through, uh, what it should look like when you click on certain buttons, not to try to get too ahead of myself. So if you have questions, you want me to slow down just a little bit, uh, something that doesn't look like what you've got. Uh, most of the Palm Pilots are pretty universal. Uh, I'm not supposed to call them Palm Pilots. PDAs are universal. Uh, on the first slide that you're looking at, just familiarize yourself with the uh, lower left-hand corner and the lower right-hand corner where it says Bluetooth and NADP RAIN. Uh, one of the most important things to always remember before you go uh, when you're not using your PDA is to have it on the charger. There's two ways to go about charging your PDA, whether it be uh, through your computer or by the uh, charging cradle that was provided when you first got that. So the charging cradle has a tendency to work a little bit better. Another button to also familiarize yourself with is what's called the reboot button. It's halfway down on the right-hand side. Uh, it's called recess but, or the recessed button to reboot the PDA. Basically what that button does is it'll take you all the way through uh, the HP Packard uh, rebooting format and it'll bring you back to the main screen that you see on this particular slide. Next slide, please. The gauge we're talking about today is the NOAA 4 rain gauge. Uh, the picture on the left is a, a common rain gauge that's uh, out in the field. It's uh, uh, surrounded by an altar shield. Uh, it's basically a wind deflector, uh, so it cuts down on the amount of wind shake and stuff like that in the more uh, higher planes uh, sites that will cause wind shake. Uh, these particular gauge is different from the Belfort gauge that was so, uh, that we had so many in the network, uh, will show a lot more noise uh, in comparison with the old style Belfort gauges. Uh, the picture on the right is just a picture with the outer shell removed. Next slide, please. A lot of the troubleshooting that we ask the site operators to do uh, when they're uh, downloading their data and stuff like that, there's only a couple real common problems, but one thing that would be real helpful uh, at the beginning and at the end of, uh, of this uh, webinar is to familiarize yourself with the terms used uh, in these two photos. This first one, uh, the one to the left, is the one for the... <coughs> Excuse me, please. Uh, as I said, experience a cold. Uh, the Bluetooth dongle is one that we will ask you to reset on a number of occasions. 
Uh, it's always important if you're going to be an operator that's going to go out and work on these particular instruments to keep your voltmeter handy. Voltmeter is always uh, very helpful because that's going to be one of the things when you call into the 1-800 line, uh, we'll ask you if you're experiencing difficulties with your download, uh, whether you have uh, sufficient power uh, going to the gate and stuff like that. So if you can familiarize yourself with not only the dongle, the power junction, the power plug and the event recorder wiring on the one part, and then go to the next slide if you would, Brian. There's three parts that we want you to familiarize yourself with as well. Uh, the battery connectors, the 12 volt battery, and the trickle charger. Uh, trouble occurs on occasions as these gauges sit out in the elements, uh, like any other battery, whether it be in your car, uh, wherever it may be, batteries have a tendency after a number of years to go bad. Uh, we are in the process for some of our older uh, gauges to uh, refurbish the batteries uh, and the trickle chargers. If you have the ability to be able to purchase your own battery, your 12 volt battery, then that's fine. Uh, if you're unable to do that, then uh, NADP will work with you on getting you a replacement. Now that you've familiarized yourself with the guts of the gauge, so to speak, and the outer shell, one thing I want before we get onto the, uh, I'll actually do that in a minute after we look at the PDA, because I want to, we're going to disassemble the gauge as part of a troubleshooting uh, guide. And uh, as we do that, then I want to show you a couple important items to look at as you're disassembling your NOAA 4 ring gauge. Okay, let's go to the next slide, and then this is when Chris Lehman will step in. All you will notice are his beautiful hands. There used to be a commercial on TV where Madge was soaking her hands in a in a soap uh, little bowl of soap, and uh, I don't know if his hands compared to hers, but uh, appreciate him taking time out today to join us. Like I said, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a holler. Okay, we're trying to get the best picture if we can. Um, hopefully, if you've got a PDA with you, that now would be a great time to grab it. I'm trying to get the, away from the glare of the light, so sorry about that. Um, at least you can see where to click on the screen. Uh, it would also help if you download the PowerPoint. We believe we mentioned that at the beginning of this, the presentation. There is a webinar um, PowerPoint or PDF file that will walk you through the steps I'm going to be taking. Uh, Brian just posted the link up there. You've got the PowerPoint uh, in the box to your lower left-hand corner. And just follow along as we walk through the steps on the PDA. And again, sorry for the quality of the picture here, but at least you can get a sense of what we're looking at. As Jeffrey mentioned, and I hope everybody can hear me okay, I think we've resolved our sound problems. Uh, before you come to the field, you want to make sure your PDA has an adequate charge. A lot of the issues we see are because either the PDA is timed out or just doesn't have enough charge to communicate. And you can tell your charge here on the main screen. This is where you turn it on. You can see the battery level. This one's right now at 92%. And then um, to get to the Bluetooth manager, what I'm going to first show is how you connect to the Bluetooth manager and how you download the data off the gauge. Jeffrey, feel free to jump in if I'm skipping any of the steps. We've kind of reshuffled the Jeff's cold here, um, but feel free to jump in, Jeff, if you want to add any points here. On the main screen, you'll see two links at the bottom. One is to the Bluetooth connection in the lower left-hand corner. The other is to NADP RAIN in the right-hand corner. Um, those are the main things you'll need to use uh, to connect here. So I'm going to go ahead and open the Bluetooth manager. And um, I, I will jump in real quick. Uh, Familiar, always familiarize yourself with the, the face, the home page, so to speak, of your PDA. Uh, what you really want to be conscientious of is that you have the current date right above your name. Uh, sometimes with the battery functions of the PDA itself, uh, that'll get out of kilter. So the, the date on your PDA has to be the same as the date on your gauge. And if you need to change that, you notice I just clicked on it. Again, apologize for the quality of the picture. This is sent on the central time the current time and the dates, and you can go ahead and change that if you need to. To get out of the screen, you just click the upper right-hand corner where it says OK. Hopefully, there we go. 
Um, so that should be up there, current date and time. We have the owner. One of the things we also want to check is to make sure we have Bluetooth communications on. Here's the icon right here. Um, if you see this is off, go ahead and click on it, and you can see both how to enable or disable Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. We don't use Wi-Fi um, for any of our NADP protocols, so that should be uh, set to off. It saves battery life. Bluetooth should be on. When you've verified that, you can click Done in the lower left-hand corner, and you'll see um, next to the Bluetooth icon, it does say On. If you're going to leave your PDA on charging throughout the week, uh, it's okay to leave the Bluetooth on. Uh, if you turn it off and set it aside, or if you ha leave it on, uh, make sure that you turn the Bluetooth off uh, after you're done at the site because it will run down the battery on the PDA. And you probably figured this out too, but you can adjust your screen brightness with this icon right here. So if you're out in the field, um, you can dial that up as much as you want. So I'll go ahead and proceed to the Bluetooth manager. So you tap the left soft key on the front screen. Um, again, th this is walked through on the PowerPoint presentation where Brian posted the link. So um, you should see a, a shortcut to your gauge here for the serial port. If you don't see that, we might walk you through the step of showing how to create a new connection. We're not going to do that at this point, but when we get to the troubleshooting, we can talk about that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this and it's connect, correct? Yep. Yep, you click on there, and you notice how that's that little tip, you know, first time user, you're like, how do I use this thing? If you click and hold, you see it pops up with connect. So go ahead and do connect, and you'll see serial port connecting, and then you'll notice the icon changed there, so we know we're done. You need to make sure that the two green arrows uh, once connected are facing each other, that way you're able to determine that the uh, that it is connected. Yeah, as Jeffrey noted, you notice this little green icon in the middle that shows that they are connected. When you've completed that step, go ahead and click in the upper right-hand corner, the X, to go back to the main screen. And we're now on the next slide in the PowerPoint. We're following along here ourselves. You want to start the NADP RAIN program, which is in the lower right-hand corner. So go ahead and start the soft key. Just tap it with a stylus. Um, it's waiting. It should pop up. As it says, it may take a while. Um, the first step you want to do is go ahead and retrieve the data. Retrieve data from gauge. Click here. The connection type is Bluetooth. You shouldn't have to change anything on this screen. Um, there's just a note in the PowerPoint that if you have one of our older Dell-type PDAs, this will look slightly different. This is uh, the HP um, IPAC PDA, which is our most common one in the network. One of the things I'm going to jump in real quick is if you, for some reason, get yourself in a position uh, to where you want to go back and you don't know how to go back, uh, find a open space with your stylus, and I'll have Chris do that as uh, we talk about it. It will bring up a menu. So, oh, there we go. Yeah, hold it on. Now you'll see a menu bar that will actually let you download. Uh, it talks about exit, collect, rain gauge. If you want to move back and forth uh, from what you had done previously, just hit exit. It's not going to exit you out of your connection. It's just going to take you back to the next screen. So it gives you the option to exit. Okay. Exit again. Okay. Yeah. And then you're right back to your main screen in case you hit a wrong button. Or so don't panic. I mean, I when I first started using the PDA, you get to a certain point, you get yourself in a position. You can always move backwards by finding an open white space there on the screen. Okay, so we'll go ahead and you want me to proceed to download data? Retrieve data. Okay, retrieve data. Jeffrey has to guide me. I don't do this every day. So, okay, so we're on Bluetooth, and now we've already connected, correct? We will connect. Click connect. Okay. You notice there's a lag. Sometimes it will be... What, up to a minute it would take yeah. for it to communicate. What it's actively doing is finding the gauge. Um, so it may take up to 60 seconds to find it there.
Now we go ahead and click on this, correct? Yep. All right. We click to highlight it. And for some reason we are in, okay, now we. It's saying connection attempt. It's, it's attempting to connect. And we are connected. What you will see once connected, you will get four options on the connection attempt and fail. After four, it's probably not going to connect and it's something along the lines which we will talk about in our troubleshooting section. What you want to see once it's finally connected is your site ID, whatever it may be, along with the uh, gauge type and the version of the software in there. So uh, after you've seen that, then you can proceed in the lower right hand corner with the button download. Here's a real important part of this, downloading from. As the battery starts to get a little bit aged on these PDAs, what will happen sometimes is that the date will get thrown off kilter as far as the download from. I've had operators that say, well, I downloaded it last week, but when I came back to this particular screen, uh, it said 2009. So always, always, always make sure that you remember when you downloaded last, uh, the time specifically and the date, and to double check that before you proceed with your download. Uh, if it reverts back to a problem where the battery is a little bit low, you could be downloading records for days. So double, ch double check your date and your time and continue with download. Okay, so we, we're at step 12 if you're following along in the PowerPoint under downloading from an NDP rain gauge. You can pick your date range, uh, and it defaults back to the previous date, correct? Right. That you did that? Okay. So should we just leave it the way it is? Yeah, if you're doing Tuesday to Tuesday, and you'll see that the date's a little bit different here because we've been playing with this, but what you want to do is go, if I took and took my sample off on 3, 5 at 9 o'clock and I downloaded my data, then the next time I download from would be 3, 5 at 9, 9 a.m. as well. So you hit download. It's going to take a minute. The standardized sample should be uh, uh, under 194 hours. That's eight days and two night or eight days and two hours. When you download your records on a seven-day sample, it should read right around 654 or 52 hours. So then you know you've got a full week's worth of records. It asks you when it looks at this uh, after you've clicked and it's downloaded. Uh, it tells you how many records you have downloaded, and it'll give you the option re uh, records requested and records okay. Then you go down and you hit data. Your sample duration was, for example, 3 5 12 or 3 5 2014 at, say, 10 15 a.m. The sample was taken off 3 12. 10:15 a.m. and you hit view. Okay. And you notice you can, if you have a co-located site here, um, you can pick the various networks. This one happens to be configured for all three of our networks: NTN, MDN, and Aramon. Um, and as Jeffrey said, this does not necessarily have to match your sampling period. You can pick any range you want, and then you can go ahead and do view. Are there any questions before we proceed? One thing I want every operator to be aware of that does this, the time that you're, when you fill out a field form, the time that you take your bucket off is the time that you put your next bucket on. So if you are busy taking your sample off, which is the first thing you ought to do is take your sample off and get it sealed and everything like that, make your notes that you need to and get your new bucket on. Before you download your data, if you take your bucket on off at 9 a.m., uh, your next time on ought to be 9 a.m., not when you download your e-gauge data, but when you actually took the bucket off. Uh, if you're following along in the PowerPoint, we're now at step 18. We're viewing the daily amounts, and as it says, there's a scroll bar. Uh, normally, you'd have more than just today's record, but you can scroll, you can scroll on, the right on there to view the data. <laughs> um, so some of the parameters you'll see on there, 
Again, this is an inside gauge that we use solely for demonstration. You can see your uh, date, so it's the day of the week. The amount of precipitation here was zero. Total hours of wet exposure, total hours of dry exposure, mist exposure, and then the number of collector cycles. This being an inside demo, we don't have a hook to a collector, it's all zero. You at your site, if you had precipitation, you should see appropriate amounts here. Um, and we'll also, at the end of this, we'll be showing what you can view on the website. This is unprocessed data. Um, you're free to write this on your field form, but there's some correction algorithms we actually run after the data are uploaded. So one question we often get is, well, my data doesn't exactly match what's on the PDA. Um, we realize that, and a lot of that has to do with time adjustments because we adjust everything to um, GMT. So what NADP actually uses is not what you're viewing on your PDA, but what you upload and after we perform some correction algorithms to it. So um, as it says in the PowerPoint, it talks about all the data parameters there. You can also go back to um, close the window here and you could view the other network. So you could come back here and if you're, say, doing some troubleshooting, you had precipitation in your NTN collector but not your MDN, you could pull up the MDN data, uh, sorry, click the on, MDN data, and uh, look at the cycles of that collector to see perhaps one collector is working, maybe another collector has some sort of some issue. Um, okay, then uh, the next thing you're going to do, and we don't have any visuals of this, we're not going to link this up to the computer, the next part of the presentation. Uh, Brian, why don't you go ahead and switch back to the PowerPoint, please. Actually, if we could, Brian, before you do that, have you done it already? What I want to make every operator aware of, when, when you're done with this, if you're going to take a pad of paper and write down your precip amounts, or if you're going to refer to it back at the uh, laboratory, uh, you're not done with this PDA. You have to exit all the way out and disconnect from the gauge. Uh, so as you progress and do this, find that open white spot once again where you hold it, you hit exit and exit your way all the way out to your main screen. You do not want to leave your PDA connected to your rain gauge and leave the site for the week because what it'll do is when you come back and you try to download your data again, your PDA is already going to be connected and the data logger will be confused with the situation and that's where you run into the problems of having to try to reboot and connect and uh, it can be a problem. So go ahead and disconnect. Disconnect. Thanks for that note. Exit. Exit. Okay. Exit again. Okay, if you want to, for some reason, go back and look. Realize, though, when you retrieve your data from your rain gauge, you want to do that. You want to recall prior data. That's the shortcut that you can take for looking at your data once you get back to the laboratory without having to reconnect to your gauge. So we'll show that as we progress. So here. Um, and they'll give you warnings if you do an invalid range, but you could look at prior data. You don't need to re-retrieve the data. There is no harm in re-retrieving no. it, but there's no need to do it. And also we get questions, um, what if you've got overlapping records? That's fine. When you upload it to our server, we sort that out. So it's perfectly fine to send overlapping periods. Okay. Just hold it on the white area. And exit. exit. And it will take a moment to get all the way out sometimes. Go ahead and try it again. It didn't take. We are disconnected. Yep. Try okay. it again. Disconnect it again. Okay. Should I click here? Yep. All right. There, there we, we go. Exit. Exit again. And you're all the way out. And all you have to do as we progress in the next part is, go ahead and bring it up, Brian. You're all the way out. You're disconnected away from your PDA now, and your PDA is disconnected from your rain gauge, uh, transmitting data. Uh, your data cable that you'll have into your computer, uh, you just plug it into your, uh, into your PDA uh, with your ActiveSync program uh, and then able to download. Remember that the files that we want are the XML files, not the text files. Uh, and you see the website 
uh, NADP slash precip at isws.illinois.edu for sending all your data to. Okay, the part where if you're unable to connect, what can happen? The most common message is called COM port not enabled. If you receive this interruptions in power, as I said, whether you're working on a uh, the type of an AC system where you have the AC power, or if you have a battery system, sometimes the interruption of power to the gauge, whether it be the battery power or the AC power, can cause uh, the Bluetooth dongle, which is your signal system to your data logger, to stop blinking. Uh, one of the first things we'll ever ask you when you say, I, am, I can't connect, uh, what kind of message are you getting? COM port not enabled. So if you want to follow along, if you get this, the first question I'm going to ask you, have you checked your power to your PDA? Uh, unfortunately, one of the things that you have to do is if you I ask you to reboot your PDA, which is about halfway down on the right-hand side, and you reboot it and came back and you're still not, uh, when you said connect and it goes through all those connection attempts, uh, then it will eventually come up with the message COM port not enabled. Next step I'm going to ask you to do is probably take the outer shell of your gauge off to make sure that your Bluetooth dongle is flashing. And I'm going to move around the table real quick. You can get a bird's eye view or you can refer back if you'd like. Always keep the Allen wrench handy with you as well as your voltmeter at the site in case you do have this problem. Can it, everybody, or there's a blue light as my finger points right there to the dongle. Underneath the dongle, you'll see an intermittent blue flashing light. That should always be flashing. That does not necessarily indicate that you have total power to the gauge. That just means that you have at least five volts of DC power coming out of that battery. So if that particular button is not flashing, then what we will ask you to do is simply reset the system. There's two different ways to go about doing so. The most common system where it actually reboots the entire system, and I will turn the gauge around now, is there's two different ways to reset your dongle. If you don't have the blue flashing light, you can remove the plug out of the top of the dongle itself and it'll reset things. What we will ask you to do nine times out of 10 is to remove this power plug. It'll say CR1000 right next to it. All you have to do is take and unplug it gently and you leave it out for 10 seconds. After you've left it out for 10 seconds, plug it back in and make sure as you look at the Bluetooth dongle that you got a blue flashing light and we do have a blue flashing light. That's the way to reset the system. After you've reset your gauge itself, then what you're going to want to do is go in and reboot your PDA. Let it run through a system and then start from square one. Try to reconnect, reestablish your Bluetooth connection, then move on to, once you're connected, then you can move on to your NADP RAIN and be able to do your download of your data. Are there any questions? There are a few more things that occur. We don't want to get into a total troubleshooting, but we want to familiarize yourself with the general reset of the gauge itself along with the PDA. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. You want to go ahead and point out the um, imbalance or issue here with this gauge? Yeah, there's a there's an issue with this particular gauge. When you are asked to take apart the gauge and you take the outer shell off, one of the things that I want you to be real apparent of are as you take the gauge apart, and I want Chris to take the camera and show the inner interior of this particular gauge. See the two wires in there? Those are the wires that are actually going to plug in to the load cell themselves. You have to really be careful in unplugging those. You don't want to pull from the wires. If you're unable to collect your data or you're not seeing your data collected, that's also a check, too, to make sure that those are plugged in. 
in order to see if those are plugged in, you're going to have to take the bucket itself out because they are actually underneath the bucket itself. And I'm going to tilt those this towards you as well. See the two plugs on either side of this gauge right here and right here? Those are where those optical sensor plugs from the inner shell of the gauge are plugged into. You always want to double check and make sure that those are plugged in. When putting this gauge back together, make sure that there are three nodules on top of this gauge. Can we see right here? There's three nodules. Make sure that the underneath side of your rain gauge bucket lines up with the three nodules. If it's off center, then you'll get some bad uh, noise. Uh, it won't line up, you get wind shake, and the data will be compromised. Are there any questions? In review real quick, things to remember before you download your data, always make sure your PDA is charged and that your battery symbol is, or your battery symbol shows greater than 75%. Make sure your date and time are correct and make sure that your Bluetooth uh, symbol indicates on. One real important thing that we didn't discuss throughout uh, as we were walking through the PDA is once you've established connection with your rain gauge, do not walk away from the gauge. Uh, limit your movement till it's done downloading. Walking away from the gauge once connected could interrupt the connection process, cause a problem. You have to go back in and reboot the system. Can be a uh, pain. Uh, how to download data once again. You want to go back to the PDA once again or run it off of the... This is just kind of like your cheat sheet. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, power onto the PDA. Click your boot Bluetooth in the lower left-hand corner. Uh, double click on your shortcut icon. Uh, once connected, make sure that you uh, have the two green arrows pointing to each other in the upper right-hand corner. You can hit OK. Uh, move on to your NADP RAIN in your lower right-hand corner of your PDA screen. The option you should choose is retrieve data and tap. Uh, connect, tap on connect, tap download from, double check your dates. Make sure that it's from the last time that you downloaded. Uh, click download and wait for it to be completed. And once the download is completed, then you can go ahead and view your data. In viewing your data, uh, take into consideration the cycles. Uh, the wet exposure, dry exposure, mist exposure, uh, time, amounts, and stuff like that. And transcribe all that from the PDA onto your uh, piece of paper, or uh, you can retrieve the, recall the data at a later. Lastly, always remember to exit all the way out of the PDA as well. Okay, for the last part of the presentation, um, Jeffrey and I talked a bit about the content. I'm not sure site operators are, are very aware of that we process the data. I mentioned that earlier, that the files you upload to us get processed automatically. And when you email them into the NADP-precip line, they're automatically processed by our server um, 24 hours a day. So if you're in the field on the weekend, you can upload it and view it online, and we actually have some nice diagnostic tools there. So I just want to go through a few things to be aware of. Um, also, almost a year ago, we did a presentation. Uh, it was at the end of March of 2013, and there's some nice documents there about uh, the electronic rain gauges. So if you go to the NADP training website and scroll down to past events, um, you can see the electronic rain gauge presentation from, from last March with some nice information. I'm just going to briefly go through how to use this website. Um, first, when you go to the NAD Precip website, it's a simple drop down. You pick your site at the top. Uh, time format you can send to either standard time or uh, UTC, that's universal time. You choose the date ranges there. Um, and where the calendar shows white, it's where you can actually actively download data where data have been uploaded to the server. And like I said, even if in the field, if you've got a way to send in data from the field, you can upload it. And then within 15 minutes, you should be able to view it online as available. Choose the dates. And then you can choose options to either plot the data. There's various plots we can uh, look at or uh, tabular data. So there's two 
click buttons at the bottom, one to plot data or the other to view data. As far as the plots go, this is just an example from Pennsylvania 15. It's a site that recently got a NOAA rain gauge. Um, it's just uh, uh, some things to be aware of if you have a NOAA gauge. This is a, a co-located um, station. So the top plot, the pink one, shows your cumulative precipitation depth. And this is something, this is the official record. So um, while the raw bucket depth, which is the second plot, may fluctuate a bit, or it looks like there's a bit of evaporation in this one, you'll note that the top plot has been smoothed out and only shows cumulative precipitation. So be aware of any artifacts you might be in either the top plot or the second one, that is the pink or the green line, um, that the pink line is the official NADP record, the one that gets recorded for the uh, precipitation at your site. The third plot down is temperature, that's in red, and you can see the cycling um, day to day. And again, just be aware that this should be in typical range of ambient conditions. The temperature logger is actually inside the gauge, so it might be slightly above ambient conditions, but make sure those temperatures look reasonable because those temperatures are used in part of the correction algorithm for or the precipitation amount. Um, when you download the data, you'll see this is one long plot. I broke this up into two columns. In the upper right corner is the optical sensor activity in blue, and that's only available if you have a NOAA 4 rain gauge. This is the response of the optical sensor, which is at the top of the gauge. We looked at it previously when Jeffrey had the top of the gauge open. So this is actual particle counts. And again, be aware, um, during precipitation events, you should see uh, appreciable optical sensor activity on the order of hundreds to maybe as most, you know, not more than, say, a thousand counts in each period um, there. And um, one thing that you might see is we've had insect infestations in our gauges. If you're starting to see constant lots and lots of particle counts, that's usually an indication that there's some sort of blockage or uh, maybe a spider web or something in that optical sensor path. The next plots are two sample exposure, one for the NTN at the station, the other for the Airmon. And um, it shows your wet exposure, your dry exposure, and your mist exposure. The legends there at the bottom, dry is in brown, wet is in blue, mist is in gray. Um, and then in the box is shown the number of cycles during each. Uh, this happens to be a daily plot during each day. And then finally, the bottom line is the voltage of the rain gauge so we can see if there's um, any power conditions at the site. Um, the other option you have for looking at data is in tabular form. This happens to be the daily plot for the site, and it's very similar to what you see on the PDA. Again, there might be slight differences in what you view on the PDA and what you view on screen due to time corrections, um, but the total precipitation should generally uh, compare very well. I mean, if you're seeing two inches on the website and on your PDA you only saw a tenth of an inch and there's an issue, please. I mean, we always welcome your call. If there's any concerns you have about the data you're seeing, something just doesn't look right, we really rely on you being the first-hand knowledge at the field. Please alert us to anything. Don't hesitate to, to give us a call. Um, one new thing um, we should note, go ahead, Brian, that's fine. Um, some things to note, next slide, please. Um, when you're getting this, and I'm just going to show some examples, as an incomplete data download, so in other words, we're missing data for the period, noise in the load cell, or any irregular precipitation. So this is just an example, the next one, of uh, a site that lost power. Um, I believe I saw Joe Scudlark on the line. I, I was going to pick on your site um, to look at power outages, but this looked to be uh, a nice example. You can see in the voltage plot there, we have some fluctuation. This is in Arkansas. It's a solar powered site and we have um, either inadequate capacity on the solar or the battery where we're seeing appreciable uh, voltage drop and that's resulting in an incomplete data record. One new thing that we've added now, there is a warning. It says warning less than 100% data completeness occurred for at least one day and we actually, if you look at the, the tabular data, it says which days had incomplete records. So you could look at the voltage and say, ah, there must have been a power loss at the site. Go ahead and go to the next slide, please. Another thing that Jeffrey highlighted was noise in the load cell. This is a um, 
site in Wisconsin. Um, I believe the issue here, you can either get the um, misaligned bu bucket and it was rubbing up against the side of the outer shell, or sometimes if you get a lot of snow or melted snow that pools up under the strain gauge, it can affect the load cell and freeze in there and cause this fluctuating reading. So you notice the green line there, it's not smooth, it's vibrating around. It should Any changes in the raw bucket should be gradual and smooth over time. So if you're seeing this, feel free to give us a call or look to see, make sure the rain gauge bucket's not rubbing against the side of the outer shell or that there's no snow or something packed up underneath. And then we have um, one example, again, of something to be aware of here. We're coming out of the winter season, but when you add antifreeze to the gauge, that would be recorded as positive precipitation or could be. Just be aware when you look online. In this case, it was screened out. I've got a red box showing that in the raw bucket weight, you can see um, antifreeze was added. The pink line, it's been screened out by our algorithms. But I appreciated this operator. They made the comment that antifreeze was added. Don't assume we can always catch these things. Make comments in the notes. Uh, when Brian does the data review or Roger Claybrook looks at the data, he appreciates your notes to help them look for any irregular issues there. One thing to add with the uh, with the PDA and the NOAA 4, uh, the NOAA 4 has an option for service mode. So if you are going to add uh, antifreeze to your gauge, uh, you can put it in the service mode. If you find uh, that open white space, like I was saying, it brings down the options. I click on rain gauges. You can go in there and put the gauge in service mode until you're completing uh, putting your antifreeze in and take it offline. One more point that I wanted to make too. Uh, in putting back together the gauge uh, after you have reset your dongle or whatever you may have done is to make sure that the optical sensors on the inside of the outer shell of the gauge line up with the openings on the bucket so they can see across to each other. Uh, you don't want to block the optical sensor and also when sliding the outer shell on make sure you get them past the allen wrench screws that will that you will eventually tighten down to secure uh, the outer shell. Uh, failure to get it all the way down on the base and to tighten those screws down can also add to your amount of noise. Okay, with that we're almost at the end of our hour. Uh, feel free to type any questions if you have them. Um, otherwise, give us a call. There's our contact information there. Um, and just as reminders, the nadp precip email address and then the website for looking at online data review. And thank you everyone. Again, sorry for the delayed start here uh, with the sound checks. Appreciate everybody's patience. Um, and we'll be posting this as a recording online with the information uh, and the downloads for future reference or if you're training a backup operator, all of our previous webinars are available online as recording for, for information. Are there any questions? Feel free to go ahead and type them in. I added one slide at the end of the presentation. This is a picture that was sent to me from Elk Mountain, Colorado. Uh, one of our former site operators took this, and I think it's about one of the most beautiful pictures I ever took. So I hope that gives you a serene feeling. And I thank you once again for taking time out of your busy day to join us and your continued efforts in making NADP what it is.